yeah. kamu juga bilang bahwa nggak bisa orang tuh cuma ikut-ikut aja you need to find your why gitu kan dan apakah ini juga yang kemudian membuat akhirnya kamu uh, membuat buku walk with me di 2018 awalnya the why <clears throat> the why of the book or the why of my life the why of the book after that we're going to talk about the why of your life okay datang di ngobrol bareng HW uh, saya Iwat Ramadan senang sekali hari ini wah dia langsung hai Nadia hi afternoon how are you I'm good how are you Ka- kamu bisa dengar suara aku ya Nat bisa bisa aku jelas oh good 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 aku kedengeran kedengeran juga jelas hari ini so Uh, aku tadinya mau opening dulu, tapi kemudian karena Silakan. kamu sudah join Silakan <laughs> Silakan kalau mau opening dulu <laughs> Jadi, sore hari ini spesial sekali, uh, aku akan ngobrol bareng sama Nadia Tetagaru nah, Kita akan ngobrol di buku terbarunya Nadia yang berjudul uh, Walk Me So, uh, it's her new book, actually sebenarnya ini buku udah diterbitkan di tahun 2018, kemudian diterbitkan lagi di Desember juga uh, tahun 2020 ini dengan beberapa penambahan-penambahan terutama di chapter bambu. Betul kan seperti itu ya Nat ya? Pas dia lagi minum lagi. <laughs> betul, betul sekali. <laughs> betul. Ini sebelum sebelum aku mulai, aku akan cerita sedikit bahwa I'm a very big fan of Nadia Huta Galung. Jadi pernah kejadiannya waktu itu adalah aku lupa tahun berapa satu kali Nadia lagi di Jakarta nginep di hotel Indonesia and aku waktu itu tinggal apartmenku tuh kayak walking distance lah dari dari hotel Indonesia. Nah I, uh, I I tweet waktu itu masih zaman Twitter aku tweet aku bilang ini oh my god I cannot believe that I am breathe the same air with Nadia Gutagalung. Terus my friend and also your best friend Sarah Sehan Iseng. Dia baca tweet itu juga, dia retweet and comment and she mention you. I was so embarrassed, malu banget waktu itu. Uh, long story short, tapi akhirnya kita ketemu lagi. Kemudian waktu itu adalah launchingnya uh, satu produk rambut di Jakarta. Kamu waktu itu bawa in Asia's Next Top Model uh, dan mereka bawa kamu ke Jakarta and we talk waktu itu. Uh, satu hal yang aku ingat sekali waktu itu adalah you are uh, Leo. Ya, yeah. yes. <laughs> udah tahu masih ingat apa enggak waktu kita berulang kita, cuman ngobrolin seorang Leo. Hari ini juga aku sebenarnya akan ngajak uh, teman-teman uh, Herworld Indonesia untuk masuk ke dalam kehidupannya Nadia Huta Galung sesuai dengan judul bukunya yaitu Walk with Me. So we're going, I'm going to uh, apa namanya ajak uh, followers kita untuk uh, masuk ke dalam kehidupannya Nadia, Nadia Huta Galung. Tapi akan aku bahas pertama kali adalah dari si zodiak Leo ini dulu. Setahu aku, seorang Leo itu waktu mudanya very unstoppable. Very ambitious, very unstoppable. Terus kemudian dia punya banyak sekali mimpi gitu. Sampai ketika dia mencapai usia tertentu, dia akan berhenti dan kemudian dia akan memulai sesuatu yang baru yang berbeda sekali sama ceritanya dia dulu. Now I want to know, how is your life? During those, those unstoppable phase uh, di masa Leo muda itu. Oh, well, hi, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much that you uh, um, that we're here today together. Uh, dan juga walaupun enggak enggak bernafas udara yang sama. Uh, we're in the same cyberspace, <laughs> in the same cyberspace, um, and Sabtu. Mm. Jadi, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, then uh, about being a Leo, tentang mengenai Leo. Um, sebetulnya aku tidak terlalu 
percaya mengenai cuma Leo doang karena we, we are, I mean I believe in astrology aku percaya dengan astrology and um, Chinese metaphysics and Batsu and Feng Shui and all of these things jadi sebetulnya we, we are made up of so many more stars depending on the time yes. power that we're born under but about waktu saya muda dan unstoppable uh, actually I think I'm more unstoppable now to be honest um, because because the the the, the apa itu tenaganya energinya beda dari waktu saya waktu saya muda gitu kan waktu muda kan ya I'm just following aja gitu kan sebetulnya enggak ada mimpinya enggak terlalu uh, apa ya mungkin ka- karena saya kerja dan mulai terkenal dan modeling dari umur 12 jadi sebetulnya tidak ada terlalu banyak waktu untuk mimpi mau jadi apa kalau saya sudah yeah. Like, what do I want to be when I grow up, gitu kan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Dan sebetulnya enggak ada mimpi untuk jadi model, enggak ada mimpi untuk mm-hmm. jadi uh, uh, MTV VJ, enggak ada impian seperti itu sama sekali. Sebetulnya pengen jadi uh, dokter hewan atau zo- study zoology, gitu kan. Or something like that, something to do with rescuing or animals. Dan ternyata that's kind of what I'm still doing until this day, gitu kan. Um, so... I think now, bedanya, I have the time to be a little bit more strategic, and that's my <laughs> hi. <laughs> my Christmas elf is running behind me to use my steal my head right? <laughs> hello. You want to come and say hello? Hi. So she's um she's going to a friend's house, so she's coming to see okay. my friend. Come and say hello quickly. Doing an IG live with a magazine. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, mungkin apa ya bedanya? I think now I have more time to be a little bit more um, strategic and supported and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, understand where my my superpowers are and how yeah. to utilize them. Mm-hmm. Jadi bisa dibilang Sebenarnya waktu muda itu memang benar-benar ngikutin apa yang ada di depan mata, dikerjain aja. Yeah. Tapi kemudian justru sekarang ini justru lebih paham apa yang dimauin dan kemudian dikerjakan. And I agree with you when you say that you are more unstoppable now than before. Karena aku dengerin Magna Talks juga, ngobrolnya kamu sama Ias Lawrence. Dia membahas title kamu banyak banget. But I like the the title that you are a multitasking mom. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's nah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you, a multitasking mom. That's it, gitu ya. Karena banyak sekali yang dikerjakan, dikerjakan. Cuman yang aku juga bikin penasaran adalah gini. Momen ketika kemudian akhirnya kamu tahu bahwa oke, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. Dan kemudian juga itu yang kemudian akhirnya kamu kejar dan kamu kerjakan sekarang. itu kan bisa dibilang sebagai turning point gitu kan ya. Nah itu kapan ya nak kejadiannya and what was the apa yang bikin kamu akhirnya jadi nemu turning point itu? The turning point to to which which to which one for environmental work or for for everything? I mean beda banget apa yang kamu kerjakan sekarang sama dulu kan? Dulu be model terus kemudian VJ very celebrity gitu. Tapi kalau sekarang tuh lebih ada meaning gitu. I'm so sorry to put this, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, sebetulnya dari tahun 96, actually the, it's the first time I spoke about conservation issues. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, itu memang sudah di dalam hati dan di, sudah di dalam pikiran. Tapi mungkin karena waktu itu I had to, I had to. Yeah, I was young and I was taking advantage of all of the opportunities yang yang datang kan. And mm-hmm. because I was young, I didn't have the uh, apa ya, mungkin the skills and the the um the experience to be able to put into practice the things that I really wanted to do. Gitu kan. Mm-hmm. Jadi, I don't think there's a real real turning point. I think the turning point is just, you know, when I when I developed more experience and that's coming from all of the years of trying and failing and trying and you know making mistakes and, and things like that because that was my school uh, for me that's the school of life kan? um, mm. the turning point I think for um, 
Mm. If we talk about the turning point or, or environment into emotional well-being or um, understanding of the mind, itu sih sudah dari mungkin like 16 years um, mm. or even 16 or 16 or 18 years. Dan sebetulnya waktu saya umur 20-an, buku-bukuku di di rumah itu semua buku mengenai agama. Uh, mm. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, yeah. Buddhism, uh, theology. Yeah. Karena aku sangat, I was always questioning, like, what, what is what is this life? What are we here for? Gitu kan? Memang dari dulu sih. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Uh, apakah mungkin turning point-nya adalah ketika kamu kemudian menjadi UN Ambassador uh, dan berbicara soal environment pada saat itu? Atau memang, again, kayak, apa namanya, um, Go with the flow gitu sampai akhirnya ketika sampai di satu titik, oke, okay, I think I'm going to do this, kayak gitu. Uh, no, I think it's just been building. I mean, if I, if kalau aku lihat hidupku dari dulu dari waktu saya kecil, mm-hmm. what is what I wanted to do and apa yang saya lakukan sekarang nggak begitu jauh beda. Karena memang dari dulu aku selalu pengen bantu. bantu yeah. sesuatu, bantu something gitu kan, like if I yeah. want to do zoology or uh, uh. A, a dokter hewan gitu, karena aku mau menyelamatkan binatang or, or something like that gitu kan, dan dari waktu yeah. saya jadi ibu, kan anakku yang paling besar udah, udah 27, mm. eh, 27, jadi yeah. setelah dia lahir, dari sejak waktu itu aku udah pikirin dunia ini, karena Karena dia yang akan menerima dunia dunia ini kan? Ya, 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 ya. So you do, you do this for your kids actually. Yes, ya. Yeah. Hmm. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. That's really nice. Ini juga menjawab mungkin pertanyaan the why. Karena aku juga sempat lihat interview kamu sama Dave waktu itu di brunch with Dave Harper's Bazaar Indonesia. Yeah. Kamu juga bilang bahwa nggak bisa orang tuh cuma ikut-ikut aja. You need to find your why, gitu kan? Dan Apakah ini juga yang kemudian membuat akhirnya kamu uh, membuat buku Walk With Me di 2018 awalnya? The why? The why of the book or the why of my life? The why of the book? After that we're going to talk about the why of your life. Okay. The why of the book. Um, actually sebetulnya when it, pada tahun 2018 sebelum itu kan launchingnya 2018 kalau nggak salah. Bah, tapi kita yeah, perlu betul, Desember. Ya, kita perlu waktu mungkin 2 1/2 tahun, 3 hampir 3 tahun untuk to make the book, the creative process. Um, mm-hmm. and alasannya untuk bikin buku ini adalah sebetulnya waktu itu I had a, I had a, uh, a health scare. Uh, so I wanted to have something that I could show my kids or you know i could leave like if in case like in case i die tomorrow for right for example what do i have to show um that is mm-hmm. that is that is in my tone in my voice in my in, you know that, that it shows the things that i'm passionate about right um mm-hmm. and the work that i've been doing so that's why i decided to do the book it started okay. as simple as simple as that um mm-hmm. and so that's why we cover everything from african elephants to sumatran orangutans to nepal mm-hmm. um to you know my the vjs in, you know that you know from from that chapter of my life uh, yeah. to my modeling days uh, so it covers kind of all parts of well most parts of my life uh um so that i have that you know just as something to look back on i see no Di tahun 2020, buku Walk with, with Me ini kemudian diterbitkan lagi dengan penambahan di chapter bambu. Uh, penambahan ini adalah kamu bicara soal emo- emotionally well-being uh, yang adalah sangat re- relevan sekali sekarang. Uh, yang jadi pertanyaan aku adalah, kenapa emotionally, wo- emotionally well-being ini menjadi sesuatu yang uh, kamu concern sekali? sampai akhirnya ditambahin ke dalam buku ini. Because um, mungkin kan selama ini dari tahun 96 aku udah mulai bicara mengenai lingkungan hidup, masa depan kita, mm-hmm. binatang, conservation, sustainability gitu kan. Dan sebetulnya karena yeah. my role with the UN is a global role, aku juga sering sekali uh, ada di dalam uh, um, terlibat di dalam uh, acara-acara yang 
I don't know, the, top, the world's top scientists give a run. So like World Economic Forum or the United Nations or, you know, the United Nations Environment Assembly. And because of that, I know aku tahu ilmunya. Aku tahu benar-benar yeah. masa depan kita sebagai manusia. What is our future? Yeah. Gitu, um, and I know that it's not going to get easier. Um, mm. And, you know, COVID is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Yeah. Tapi kalau orang... I think like 1990, I mean, about 16 years ago, aku lagi pikir, how do I get people to care about the world if they don't care about themselves? Kalau mereka nggak peduli mengenai dirinya sendiri, mana mungkin mereka bisa pikirin climate change, atau orang hutan, atau polusi, gitu kan? Nggak mungkin. Aku bisa bicara sampai, I'm old and gray, but if they're not well, Mereka yeah. nggak nggak bisa jadi change makers di dalam komunitasnya sendiri gitu kan. Yeah. Jadi yeah. dari waktu itu aku berpikir, how do I get people to care? How do I get people to care? Dan ternyata untuk care mereka harus merasa aman dulu supaya bisa care. Kalau mereka nggak hmm. nyaman dari dirinya sendiri, nggak mungkin mereka bisa mulai peduli karena peduli itu bikin sakit gitu kan. Kalau kita pikirin climate change kayak gitu gitu kan. So okay. that's why for me emotional well-being is so important karena to be a part of the solution you have to be well dan juga keduanya untuk bisa menghadapi apa yang kita akan um, what what's coming for us we also have to be strong inside gitu kan so when i when i'm moving into emotional well-being it's not because i'm moving away from um, talking about the environment the state of the planet the state of our humanity bukan justru karena itu we have to take a few steps back and look after our emotional yeah. Dan ini ini sama juga. kayak Iya, ini sama kayak sama kayak ketika kita naik pesawat kan suka ada emergency announcement yang bilang apa namanya if you uh, if emergency in emergency situation you have to put the mask for yourself dan to others. Jadi memang pertama kali itu diri kita dulu, kita harus kuat dulu terutama dari dalam supaya kita bisa kemudian membantu di luar itu. Kurang lebih gitu ya, Nat ya. Okay. Yes, and so so it's, it's really like I, what I like to say is it's um, smart selfish. Mm-hmm. Bukan cuma selfish ya, bukan cuma self care yeah. untuk diri kita sendiri bukan. Self care is self care supaya saya bisa bantu orang lain. So that is smart yeah. selfish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love I, I love that sm- uh, smart selfish itu. Kadang-kadang kita butuhin itu untuk untuk bisa bisa juga membantu orang lain dan lebih berguna untuk orang lain. Uh, Now, dari dari um, bagaimana kamu menceritakan soal emotional well-being ini kan kamu juga uh, mengajak beberapa selebriti untuk bercerita gitu karena kamu bilang bahwa cerita setiap manusia itu penting gitu tidak ada yang tidak penting. Um, cuman ini memang diwakili oleh selebriti ada Happy Salma, ada Eva Celia, ada Iqbal Ramadan, ada Afgan, and uh, ada beberapa nama lagi ya. Kelsey sama Happy. Oh ya, Chelsea, and also Chelsea Islam. Yes. Uh, apa yang yang kamu pelajari dari cerita mereka yang mungkin bisa di-share sama uh, pemirsa kita hari ini? You know, I, I think first of all, memang saya ajak teman-teman kita dari media, uh, karena mereka ada platform, supaya hmm. these stories and this message bisa, di, bisa di, apa, disebarkan ya. Is that, is that the right word yeah. in Indonesia? Yeah, um, true, betul. Betul. lebar possible. Uh, bukan yeah. karena mereka beda dari orang biasa, bukan. Justru yeah. mereka sama dengan orang, bi- orang biasa. Of course we're experiencing mm. different in different ways, um, but they have the ability to share the message as wide as possible. Um, mm. Jadi, um, actually this you know this storytelling it started itu mulanya dari beberapa tahun lalu waktu saya lagi di Bali, lagi tinggal di Bali, um, dan waktu itu kita sempat uh, ikutin course courses courses. Course, course, writing course. course. Yes, selama 12 minggu. Uh, about it, it's a writing course, a creative writing course. Tapi what I didn't know when I joined the course actually is like therapy. So it takes you through all aspects of your life and makes you look back at you know your childhood, your childhood room, you know your parents, your relationship with your parents, you know all of these things. Then Selain that experience with these ten amazing women. Amazing women. They're beautiful. They're established. They're creative. They're dynamic. They do great work with you know their their social um, you know in the communities. Amazing women, right? And dari luar kalau kita lihat mereka, wow, kayaknya hidupnya mereka perfect banget deh. 
perfect mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. amazing right um, yeah. tapi ternyata dari situ kan dari dari 12 eh dari 10 uh, those 10 women mm-hmm. we all had to tell our story dan ada 15 menit setiap minggu untuk satu orang untuk bercerita, bercerita mengenai hidupnya yeah. hidupnya mereka yeah. dan itu dengan situasi yang sangat private, confidential, uh, safe gitu kan. We're not judging. Everybody is together. It's everyone is equal, same gitu kan. Dan ternyata dari sepuluh mm-hmm. orang itu sembilan mm-hmm. uh, uh, out of the, the ten nine had been abused, physical, sexual, wow. psychological abuse. Um, yeah. Dan tidak ada yang tahu. Tadinya tidak mm-hmm. ada yang tahu. And we all carry those stories to ourselves, and we feel like no. oh, life is so bad. We are the victim. Everyone else's life is so perfect. Tapi ternyata enggak sih. Enggak ada yang hidup mm-hmm. perfect. Kan? Kita semua bawa yeah. sesuatu, gitu kan? Yeah. So it's about yeah. how we in- encourage these conversations. We normalize these conversations. Not bukan supaya kita bisa jadi victim, tapi mm-hmm. supaya kita bisa, j- bisa membangunkan dan dan mem- mem- Uh, grow our empathy kepada mm. our, all of our friends, right? Even yeah. our enemies, right? Everybody is suffering, gitu kan? Yeah. And emotional well-being is, is really about understanding the way that our outer reality affects our inner reality and our inner peace, right? Mm. And how we can work through these emotions that we might be feeling, especially at times like this, uh, and have a better understanding of What is it that actually causes us suffering? Sering sekali kita mm-hmm. sendiri yang bikin kita suffering, ya yeah? dengan yeah. attachment Betul. kita, harapan kita yang it's not not um, realistic gitu kan, um, mm-hmm. and and like oh I I need to have this to be able to be accepted in society. I need to have this bag, this shoe, this watch, this car, this job. You know this this this. I need to go to this school, otherwise I'm not going to be accepted. It's that's not really true happiness, and that's not going to bring you. Happiness, gitu kan. Um, so it's really it's about that. It's about really sort of trying to analyze and understand. Ini ini menarik deh, karena aku juga uh, uh, apa namanya sempat baca juga, sempat tahu juga bahwa aku ambil contoh ceritanya Iqbal Ramadan. Uh, Iqbal itu di buku kamu bilang bahwa dia menemukan emotional emotionally uh, well beingnya dia atau uh, dirinya dia lewat kuliahnya, lewat yes. sekolahnya, lewat pendidikan. Berbeda dengan Happy Salma yang uh, dia menggunakan uh, prinsip uh, budaya Bali mengenai waktu sekarang uh, dulu masa akan datang dan sebagainya gitu. Um, cuma kalau bisa dirangkum gitu ya, gimana sih sebenarnya caranya untuk kita bisa kan tadi kamu bilang gitu ya bahwa kita harus melihat ke dalam dulu nih. Kita harus mengenal diri kita dulu, baru kemudian kita bisa berbuat sesuatu keluar. Even Michael Jackson juga bilang, look at the man in the mirror, hmm. gitu kan ya, don't try to change other people, change yourself, gitu. Tapi caranya seperti apa sih? Because it's not easy loh Nadia, untuk bisa mengenal diri, sendi- diri sendiri sampai akhirnya, sampai di titik emotionally well, emotionally well, gitu. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's a, it's a, Great question, and um, you know, it really it really takes a lot of um, re-educating, re-familiarizing, um, reconnecting, and having the tools to do so. Jadi sebetulnya that and that goes into why I did the book also this year is because of, of um, the work. Contentment Foundation. Karena menurut aku di sekolah itu sebetulnya dari dulu kita cuma belajar mengenai matematika, ilmu, language, gitu kan, dan yeah. nilai. Sebagai orang kita dinilai dengan these skills, math, yeah. English, science. Yeah. But we are more yeah. than that as human beings. Sebetulnya kita bisa dinilai dari our ethics, our morality, our kindness, our com- you know compassion, the way that we can build communities, right? The way that we can feel safe within ourselves. Um, so I think um, my dream is that we can give the tools of emotional well-being and understanding to the next generation of leaders, and that is through a great social emotional learning curriculum. Agam jualan sih di sini. It's really true, you know. Like this is, I think, what's, yeah. um, um, what's really important because in we have, 
a mental health crisis that's going on right now that is um, it's really scary um, and <clears throat> kalau kita lihat di Singapura aja ya contoh-contoh di Singapura kalau di Singapura sebelum covid um, mental health issues cost this country 3.1 billion dollars per year mm-hmm. uh, and the mm-hmm. population here is cuma 6.5 million people so that's a lot yeah. of money for something that nobody is talking about uh, mm-hmm. then the number one cause of death here between the age of 10 and 24 for males is suicide so and that, and, and nobody's talking about it nobody is talking about how they're doing nobody can talk to their parents kemarin aja aku lagi press con aku tanya kan i made everyone to go anonymous in the press press con uh, on zoom and i asked everyone in, in the chat can you speak to your parents if you're having any struggles or any emotional issues jawabannya semua tidak bisa enggak ada satu yang bilang iya true Jadi, we have to give the tools to our community to be able to communicate and engage and listen. Okay. Because if we have sick kids who can't talk to their parents, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sih? Sebagai orang tua, so, aku, I want my kids to be able to talk to me about everything. Dan sampai sekarang sih mereka bisa anything. All my kids can talk yeah. to me about everything. Makanya aku agak shock karena orang Bahwa other people cannot cannot talk to their parents about their problems. Aku juga bisa bicara sama mamaku dengan uh, about everything, everything. Yeah. Dan sebagai orang tua, kalau aku pikir anakku nggak bisa bicara dengan aku dengan hal-hal yang bikin mereka sangat sakit, who are they going to talk to? Siapa lagi kalau bukan orang tua yang peduli, yang sangat peduli sama anaknya? Pasti, mm-hmm. pasti cuma orang tua kan. Mm. So it's really about <clears throat> helping the community to have the tools, starting these conversations, getting people to come together, um, and and yeah, it's it's critical. Now is the time. It's really critical. Okay, uh, dan itu yang sebenarnya uh, kamu lakukan juga lewat the Contentment Foundation. Ini juga untuk menjawab soal uh, bahwa untuk menemukan diri kita itu memang sebenarnya ada langkah-langkahnya. which itu yang sebenarnya uh, dilakukan oleh The Contentment Foundation to support the mental and emotional health of humanity by bringing positive uh, psychology and well-being practice uh, to through school and organizations. Kurang lebih seperti itu ya, Natya? Yes. So that's why from, yeah. the, from the sale of the book, dari uh, sebagian uh, hasil penjualan dari Profit. bukunya, kan, uh, mm. dipakai untuk terjemahkan the curriculum of mm. Contentment Foundation mm. bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Ini menarik ya nak, karena mm, aku setuju banget sama kamu gitu ya. I don't know apakah ini budaya Asia atau tidak gitu. I don't. Aku juga nggak mau nyalahin ya. Cuman mm, di budaya Asia itu sepertinya memang kebiasaan untuk speak up itu tidak terlalu di encourage. Sehingga banyak sekali mm, orang tua sama anak itu ada gap dalam mereka berkomunikasi. Karena selalu statusnya orang tua tuh di atas, anak selalu di bawah. Tidak pernah bisa sama, gitu. Menurut kamu, gimana ya caranya untuk bisa membuat komunikasi antara orang tua dan anak ini tanpa meninggalkan culture yang seperti itu, sehingga anak bisa lebih nyaman untuk bercerita dengan orang tuanya? Hmm. I think the first step is to um, don't judge. Sebagai orang tua, kita nggak boleh... ngejudge anak kita dan bukan cuma jangan ngejudge anak kita tapi jangan jangan ngejudge orang lain di depan anak kita karena yeah. kalau kita judge orang lain like oh my god she's like that oh did you see her she's like this oh did you hear this person gossip ngejudge gitu kan nanti anak kita juga pikir bahwa mereka akan di di judge seperti itu juga kan so don't judge first of all don't judge don't judge anyone in life right because you never know what somebody mm-hmm. is going dalam hidupnya dia yeah. sendiri Um, yeah. And then, and the next is to encourage conversation on a daily basis. Jangan tunggu sampai ada kejadian baru tanya what happened, what happened gitu kan. Jadi biasa yeah. di, di kita setiap hari kita selalu makan bersama. Dinner is always together. Then um, mm-hmm. for a few years we had this culture where bahwa kita selalu tanya what is your one good thing and what is your one thing that you want to change from today gitu kan. Jadi dari situ yeah. kita 
one each person will 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 share um and then from that sharing kita bisa tanya lebih dalam oh if, if they say oh my one good thing is um i got to sit next to my friend on the on the school bus mungkin yeah oh why why is that good for you oh because she's that oh really why does she did it yeah. jadi harus tanya lebih dalam lebih dalam lebih dalam dan kasih kesempatan untuk mereka cerita dan kalau mereka um sharing sesuatu jangan reaksinya jangan terlalu heboh gitu kan jadi mereka enggak terlalu yeah. takut untuk sharing gitu kan like oh my friend did yeah. it oh really jangan ha kenapa mereka begitu kok mesti jangan gitu dong harus lebih oh really why do you think they did that what do you think made them feel that way do you think you know like if someone's bullying right at school do you think that maybe mm-hmm. the bully is feeling sad also gitu kan So it's all about mm-hmm. how we create the culture at home so that they feel mm-hmm. safe to be able to share always. Um, and honestly, I'm so grateful. My kids, especially the oldest one and the youngest one, they share almost TMI. <laughs> Sometimes. Apa lagi yang paling besar? Dia ada pacaran, dia ada besar. Jadi sometimes his stories are like, oh my goodness. I... <laughs> <laughs> But I don't react. Aku kan karena enggak reaksi jadi dia cerita terus gitu kan. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Dalam hati yeah. saya oh my god. <laughs> jadi kadang-kadang juga sebagai sebagai orang tua selain harus punya skill mendengarkan, juga harus punya skill poker face ya. Jadi yes. ketika anak bercerita kayak stay stay put, santai. Oke. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a real skill, I tell you. <laughs> Oke, okay. nah, jadi uh, hal-hal tadi akan bisa kita dapatkan di buku Walk With Me, edisi terbaru yang sudah mulai bisa uh, dibeli di toko-toko buku. Uh, dan kemudian juga kita bisa tahu kehidupan Nadia di sana, uh, ada beberapa juga sudut pandang yang diceritakan oleh Your Good Friends, seperti Sarah Sehan salah satunya, kemudian Jamie juga ada di situ. Dan pastinya kita juga bisa belajar mengenai emotionally uh, emotional well-being lewat cerita-ceritanya beberapa selebriti yang ada dalam uh, buku tersebut. Now back to the why for your life. Aku baru 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 ngeh dengan the why ini memang pada saat masa pandemi. Because of the pandemic, we stay a lot uh, at home. Terus kemudian jadi akhirnya kan banyak melihat, mencari tahu di internet, kemudian lihat YouTube. Sampai aku ketemu soal uh, YouTube-nya Simon Sinek mm-hmm. yang memang mengarang buku The Why gitu. Can you share us about The Why ini dan gimana sih cara menemukan The Why? Karena menurut aku ini juga salah satu skill yang kita harus tahu dan harus bisa menurut aku. The Why of my life. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. uh, Um I think it's my kids. Um mm-hmm. It's it's really my kids. Um And the why of my life is really I mean what I do is is what I'm passionate about is creating impact, right? About mm-hmm. shifting hearts mm-hmm. and minds, you know, being a storyteller mm-hmm. so that people can see a different reality um, yeah. uh, and and shift the way that they maybe you know live their lives or the way that they create impact um and that has been for a long time right um yeah. and i think it to mulanya sih dari mami um my mom was the one that it dulu sih dia yang uh, sebelum saya lahir mami kan mami australia papa orang indonesia yeah. Yeah. dan sebelum aku lahir mami sempat uh, tinggal di Indonesia dan waktu itu dia pernah menyelamatkan orang hutan uh, hmm. dan waktu dia pindah balik lagi ke Australia Australia waktu saya kecil dia dia tanam sayur sendiri dia composting hmm. dia selalu bicara mengenai uh, um, uh, the state of the planet about uh, being self sustainable living off the grid so dari dulu sih it's it's already there in my mind and then because I was such a young mom um, seperti aku cerita tadi sebetulnya anakku yang paling besar do, sebelum dia lahir aku I went to get my diving license so when yeah. I got my diving license I was diving in Thailand and mm. 
this, the sea was so beautiful. It was so beautiful back then, you know, like the, the coral was all different colors and shapes and like, like beautiful, you know, and then um, so many different kinds of fish. After he was born, mungkin dia udah hampir sat, satu tahun lebih, like kurang lebih satu yeah. tahun. Kan? Aku pernah yeah. balik lagi ke Thailand and I went diving again di tempat yang mm-hmm. sama. Tapi dalam, mm-hmm. dalam waktu sedikit itu, itu lautnya udah beda banget. Mm-hmm. Udah berubah. Mm-hmm. Koralnya okay. yeah. ikannya di, udah di dalam apa? Uh, ke, uh, Truk, uh, trap. Apa itu? Uh, yeah, uh, jaring. 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 jaring yeah. gitu. uh, yeah. Terus udah ada plastik di on top of the ocean gitu kan. Dan mm. aku lihat itu. I'm like, wow. Kalau dalam hidupku, dalam sewaktu sedikit itu, dunianya mm. dia sudah berubah. Udah sangat berubah sebanyak itu. Mm-hmm. Apalagi selama mm-hmm. dia hidup. Nanti kalau dia udah besar, mm-hmm. how is this world gonna be, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I think that was a real gift. It was a gift to me. Because mm-hmm. it gave me the, that perspective of a parent. Yeah. And thinking about yeah. um, how the world will be in their future. Gitu kan? Jadi, memang yeah. dari dulu, I think that is what the why, the main why. And then, mm-hmm. waktu aku mau give up, I think 2018, I was like ready to give up, finally, after all these years. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was really, you know, doing a lot of thinking. And aku pikir, kalau aku give up, berarti I give up on my kids. If I give mm-hmm. up, aku gak bisa tidur. Kalau malam kayaknya gak bisa tidur. Aku kalau give up, yeah. that is the message I'm sending to my kids. You know, that you can yeah. just give up on these things. Yeah. Then kalau masalah lingkungan dan... Um, Yeah, our environment. There's no end goal. Got a goal mm. post. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm not Captain C. When are you going to be finished? I'm like, dude, I I really don't know. I mean, how how can we finish, right? <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's like, so bisa dibilang juga. Berarti ini juga menjawab pertanyaan turning point kamu adalah mungkin ketika when you have your first son, uh, your first kid, gitu kali ya. Di situ okay. kamu melihat terus kemudian kamu diving lagi. Oh my god, dalam waktu yang sangat singkat. Dunia sudah bisa berubah sebegitu drastisnya. Apalagi kalau misal sampai nanti dia sudah dewasa gitu dan dan satu lagi adalah yang aku tangkap uh, your passion of making impact, a good impact to people itu juga menjadi salah satu uh, hal yang membuat kamu jadi bersemangat dalam hidup dan yeah. itu menjadi alasan kamu untuk yeah. hidup. That's really good, very beautiful. Um, Aku mau ngingetin dulu bahwa obrolan kita ini nanti akan kita rekam untuk kemudian akan kita tayangkan di YouTube-nya Her World Indonesia dalam program A Chat with Nadia Huta Galung. Jadi uh, santai aja, ini bisa di-replay lagi untuk ditonton ulang uh, dan semoga juga bisa menjadi inspirasi untuk teman-teman semua. Next question. I saw a lot of photo of this guy. I read the book. Mm. An open heart, the Dalai Lama. Oh, I, 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 I love this book. I love, love, love him. Um, yang aku tangkap dari buku ini adalah he teach us about compassion. Which, menurut aku, compassion itu adalah sesuatu hal yang sangat penting untuk dipelajari dan dikuasai oleh seorang manusia. Can you tell us about Compassion and about Dalai Lama. <sighs> oh, um, you met him, right? Yes, yes. So oh my God, it, lucky you! <laughs> yes, I, I'm very, very grateful. Um, actually, udah hampir 13 tahun, aku setiap tahun ketemu His Holiness. Uh, oh. not, not in person, I mean... Uh, not private audience, but every year I see uh, His Holiness mungkin sekali atau dua kali per tahun, karena dia mm-hmm. udah mulai tua dan um, sebisa mungkin aku mau sedekat mungkin dan dapat uh, teachings from His Holiness so, yeah. as regular as possible. Tahun ini, mm-hmm. yeah, we can't do it, but we have a lot of teachings online. Um, yeah. I have met His Holiness for private audience tahun 2018. 18 atau 19 aku lupa. Uh, and that was, you know, an amazing experience. Um, yeah. The first time I met His Holiness was um, I was 
aku hamil dengan Naila, anakku yang tadi. Yeah. Yeah. Middle, middle elf. Um, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was pregnant with Naila and we went for teachings in India um, with His mm-hmm. Holiness. And pada saat itu sih sebetulnya aku, I was very lucky because I got to sponsor those teachings. Uh, then mm-hmm. at the end of the teachings, we get to offer the kata, which is the white scarf. We offer the scarf to His yeah. Holiness. Dan dia ambil scarf itu yeah. dan dia balik lagi di, di atas kita. It's like a blessing gitu kan. Um, dan mm-hmm. aku, yang yang untuk dari dari para sponsor semua aku yang terakhir ngantri di belah, paling belakang gitu kan jadi aku lihat semua udah dikasih kata gitu mm. di bless 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 gitu pas aku berdiri di depan his holiness I give the scarf dia ambil dia kasih aku scarf itu terus dia panggil attendantnya dia dipanggil mm. dia minta satu lagi katanya dan dia kasih saya dua padahal nggak bisa lihat aku hamil karena baru dua, dua bulan iya yeah. terus aku, aku pikir semua Sponsor dapat dua, tapi ternyata hmm. cuma dapat dua. Jadi dia kasih ke Naila, tapi dia belum bisa lihat. Sebelum, sebetulnya dari luar nggak bisa lihat bahwa aku hamil. Iya, yeah. iya. Yeah. So he knows, he he knows that okay. I was gave me the scarf. And so compassion oh. when when I that same teachings and then when I sat down for in 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 the audience with His Holiness, I have a photo of me sitting right in front, and it's just me, and then I can see His Holiness. And I'm crying, crying, and crying, and crying, and crying because His Holiness is full of love, limitless love and compassion. That is, nggak ada ujungnya, nggak ada maksudnya. Like He doesn't have any motivation except for you to benefit you, to help move you from a place of suffering. Gitu kan? And when you're in His presence, you can truly feel that that limitless compassion. Uh, and it was just like I felt so much gratitude and, and felt, you know, this limitless compassion. Aku sih sampai sekarang sih, I'm still working on my compassion. Um, because even though on the outside, I, I talk about being kind and, you know, meditating and all of these things, that I still find opportunities where, and, and times, uh, not opportunities, but there are till, still times when I myself realize that I'm judging or uh, I'm, I'm not being kind either to myself or maybe to my husband, right? <laughs> so it's it's a lifelong journey, you know. It's it's just because you start on the spiritual path, nggak mungkin kita bisa berubah dalam satu baca satu buku or like one month or one year or two years, gitu kan? And we have to be kind to ourselves. Bahwa kita harus mengerti bahwa nggak mungkin kita bisa berubah dalam satu hari atau satu minggu atau satu tahun, satu tahun gitu kan. And if we see that we're being not kind or not 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 so as compassionate as we want to be, we say, okay, this is my old habits. And we just keep practicing, you know? Mm-hmm. Can, can, can you explain to us the, the simple definition of compassion actually? Yang mungkin diajarkan juga oleh Dalai Lama waktu itu. Hmm, a simple explanation of compassion. Uh, I think, I think, the simplest explanation of compassion. What would it be? I mean, it, there's kindness, there's empathy, mm. and mm. empathy is being able to empathize with some the way somebody's feeling. And I feel like compassion means you're taking it one step further because you want to take action. Uh, you want to be. Um, you want to be able to do for others what you mm. want for yourself, right? Mm. Um, you mm. want to be the best version of yourself so that you can benefit mm. others. And I think that's the ultimate mm. compassion. Um, mm. and, and that's, you know, that's, that's what drives me um, in, my, in my pursuit of sort of self-improvement and things like this. It's, it's so that I can, I can be of greatest impact um, yeah. to, to, to others outside of myself. So I think that is yeah. the ultimate compassion is being able to also find equanimity, right? Um, it's easy to say, I'm going to love my best friends and I'm going to be so kind to my kids, but my tetangga nggak deh, nggak usah. Or apalagi, so, yeah, they, my competitor nggak usah. I don't need to be kind to them, nggak. You know, so you have to find equanimity, and that, that that's a great meditation. You like think about the kindness of yourself. Think about the kindness of your mom. She gave birth to you. She looked after you. She carried you for nine months. You know, she wiped your butt when you poo or pee, right? You think about that kindness, right? 
and you think about repaying that kindness to your mom. Then you think about how you can try and manifest that same love for, for your friends, right? You know, you start with your family, then you go to your friends, then you go to the strangers, and then you go to your enemies and you try and expand that love, like all that way to your enemies. Karena enemies ni itu enggak permanent. Enggak ada satu hal di dunia ini yang permanent. Kenapa we can think about that they are also permanent? Like prisoners juga, yeah. yang, orang jahat juga. Kan mereka enggak jahat seluruh hidupnya, kan? Yeah, because... True, because because the only constant in life is change, right? Betul. <laughs> yeah, and I I love I love this conversation. I love this conversation. Um, mungkin kalau di bahasa Indonesia kan compassion is welah welas asih gitu ya. Bagaimana kita bisa mengasihi orang uh, tanpa ada batasan, tanpa membeda bedakan seperti layaknya seorang ibu kepada anak-anaknya. Tidak ada satupun yang dibedakan gitu. Dan uh, ketika kita mengasihi seseorang, tidak mengharapkan kembali gitu. Nah. Yang aku juga baca dari pelajari dari buku ini adalah uh, uh, The Holiness itu juga bilang mengenai meditate, meditasi. Meditasi itu adalah salah satu cara untuk kita bisa mengontrol pikiran kita. Uh, kemudian, uh, which people suka bilang wild monkeys, ya, karena suka berisik kan gitu pikiran. Terus kemudian uh, meditasi ini juga bisa mengajarkan kita untuk kemudian melihat diri kita sendiri ke dalam gitu. But for you, How do you describe and what do you think of meditate meditation? Uh, um, the first thing that comes up to me when you when we talk about meditation is that I need to do it more. <laughs> um, um, meditation to me is something that is um, it is such a wonderful tool. Karena buat Aku sih yang paling, the, I mean, the, the most immediate thing that for me is like, seperti uh, Iwet bilang adalah, we can understand that we can control our thoughts. Kalau kita bisa control our thoughts selama 20 minit, atau 10 minit, atau 5 minit uh, di atas tempat meditasi, berarti kita juga bisa control our reaction in real life. Uh, so, yeah. kalau ada kejadian gitu kan, there's something that happens, kita bisa pilih dulu reaksinya gitu kan jangan langsung reaksi gitu. and a lot of the time our reaction to a, to a problem problem comes we react that makes the problem mm. even bigger ya enggak sih mm. tapi kalau mm. ada problem datang kita bisa lihat dulu problem itu bisa lihat dari sini lihat dari sana dan pikir dulu tarik nafas pikir dulu if i react dengan cara a b atau c resultnya hasilnya jadi gimana yeah. ya Yeah. So this this being able to control and knowing we can control our emotions and we are not the slave of our emotions. Yeah. Yeah. But then we can yeah. say, hmm, I'm going to choose C karena reaksi C mengurang, mengurangkan uh, it will it will help to reduce the problem. It will mm. help the problem to go away faster and mm. it will me from creating anger within myself or anger in the minds of somebody else right yeah. so yeah. meditation for me is really about understanding the mind mm -hmm. and, um, and and being able to use that to to one benefit our physical health yeah. right and yeah. to benefit our mental health and they're both mm -hmm. directly connected mm -hmm. right Three, mm -hmm. to benefit the relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. Four, to improve friendships when I'm calm, when I'm centered, um, when I'm happy, you know, my body mm -hmm. shows that. And I'm yeah. people enjoy being around you. Kalau kita lagi stress gini, yeah. siapa yang mau dekat? Ya gak sih? True. True. Kalau kita True. tenang, mukanya relax, kita peaceful gitu kan, pasti orang yeah. mau lebih dekat sama kita. True. Setuju. Setuju. Ini ini tuh nyambung sama satu um, kalimat yang pernah, do you know Andin? Andin Aisyah, Indonesian singer. Hmm. Dia pernah bilang sama aku, bilang gini, you know what, you know what I learned this, uh, the problem is never coming from outside, but it's actually from inside. Hmm. It's never from other people, but it's from yourself. Yeah. Kamu setuju nggak dengan itu? Oh, 100%. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, there's a, there's a few reasons, right? I mean, if you believe if you believe in karma, then of course it, it's really coming from you, right? Whatever whatever manifests in our lives is a result of our karma, 
kalau kalau kita percaya di situ ya. Tapi and, and then selain itu juga um, if we if we're constantly putting the blame outside, there's no one else to blame. Because yeah. if the problems arise, itu tergantung perspektif kita. Yeah. Reaksi kita tergantung perspektif kita kan dan perspektif kita bisa dibentuk karena kalau ada misalnya kalau ada like this is kejadiannya ya yeah? like this is the, the, the incident gitu kan ada orang dari mm. sini ada yang dari sini ada yang dari sini ada yang dari sini mereka they yeah. all see something different from this experience gitu kan dan mereka bawa experience itu dan tergantung their perspective is is it's how they're gonna feel about it but we can shape our perspective Oh, this is really nice. <laughs> ini ini semua um, um, waktu kita juga nggak banyak sebenarnya Nadia. Thank you so much. Tapi mudah-mudahan beberapa menit kita bersama ini teman-teman semua jadi bisa masuk ke dalam hidupnya Nadia. Seperti juga bagaimana Nadia berusaha untuk menceritakan hidupnya lewat buku Walk with Me yang juga sudah bisa dibeli sekarang. Dan menurut aku Obrolan kita hari ini kurang lebih sum up the book ya, tanpa kita harus membahas chapter per chapter. Do you agree or not? Uh, I think so. Ya. Jadi jadi nanti nanti tuh kalau misalnya memang mau mau belajar lebih banyak adalah tonton rekaman ini ada di YouTube A Chat with Nadia Butagalung and also buy the book. Jadi setelah beli bukunya dibaca sambil dicocokin. Sama tontonan obrolan kita hari ini so, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Eh, Last question Last question Sekarang ini di di Jakarta Di Indonesia uh, Lagi demam kristal Ya, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, stone Ya yeah. mm-hmm. uh, Kami abis, percaya abis, juga abis, abis plants jadi crystals ya Ya, ya, abis plants now crystals Yeah. Nah, okay. do, do you believe in crystals also? Um, you know, I believe that they carry some of the Earth's energies. Um, yeah. I do have, I do have some crystals, as you can see. I have some crystals. Oh yeah. Um, and I have some more yeah. down here somewhere. You can see. Oh. So I do, I do have crystals, but. Um, um, would I rely on them for my well-being? No. Um, no. I don't think that they can. Um, the greatest change, the greatest medicine, the greatest doctor, the greatest healing comes from your mind. Um, the crystals are beautiful. They hold energy and they're nice to have. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. I I don't think that everything your problems will go away if you have crystals. Yeah. Yeah. So balik lagi ya. Semua itu asal dari dalam. Yes. So what you have to do just being nice, uh, mempraktekkan compassion atau welas asi, meditate, start from yourself, then you can start uh, to help other people. Yeah. Kurang lebih begitu Nadia. As much as we can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Really nice. Senang sekali bisa ngobrol sama kamu. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. So, much. so again, um, good luck for the book. Kita akan bantu untuk support dari MRA Media, dari Her World Indonesia, dari Harper's Bazaar, Cosmopolitan, Mother and Baby, Casa Indonesia, to promote your book. Because so much beautiful stories you have to tell to other people through the book. So once again, congratulations for the book, yeah. Thank you so much, Iwer. I'm so happy to have these conversations with you. It's been so wonderful. Uh, and I'm grateful for everybody who's tuning in. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, when, I, when you buy the book, um, Nothing's going to me. I'm not making any money from the book. It's really going to Contentment Foundation for the translation of the curriculum. So uh, it's for a good cause. And there's yes. so much of my heart is inside that book. Um, and the team has put in so much work and so much effort. And we've had such an amazing time through the process mm-hmm. of telling stories. Um, and I think, you know, this is, 
this is just the beginning of these wonderful conversations that um, we yes. should all be having uh, amongst ourselves within our community. And I'm so grateful that that uh, MRA is is being is t is holding my hand and and walking with me uh, on this journey. So terima kasih sekali. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Nadia. Bye. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Happy holidays. Bye. Merry Christmas. Selamat Natal. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So, selesai sudah obrolan kita bersama dengan Nadia Huta Galung. Um, jangan lupa bahwa rekaman dari obrolan kita ini bisa disaksikan di YouTube account Her World Indonesia dalam program uh, A Chat with Nadia Huta Galung. Saya Iwat Ramadan, sampai ketemu lagi. Bye! Bye.